The island of Crete set against the timeless expanse of the Mediterranean Sea was a radiant jewel beneath the searing sun. Its leader, the imposing figure of King Minos, was as rigid as the towering cliffs that bordered his realm. He was a king chosen by destiny, a ruler whose claim to power was bolstered by divine authority. Yet within his heart stirred an insatiable hunger for an undeniable sign of his God-given right to rule. Minos under the burnished gold of the setting sun lifted his fervent prayers to Poseidon, the mighty god of the sea. His pleas danced on the salt-laden wind and reached the depths of Poseidon's underwater domain. He sought a divine gift, a sign of his sovereign legitimacy. From the turbulent heart of the ocean emerged a resplendent creature, a bull so exquisitely white it mirrored the celestial brilliance of the moon. The creature bore the wild beauty of the sea, a testament to the power of the deity who had crafted it. In the presence of such divine beauty, the king faltered. The sacrificial altar which should have been stained with the blood of this majestic creature instead claimed the life of an ordinary bull from Minos herd. His act of deceit a betrayal that reverberated through the halls of Olympus did not go unnoticed. Poseidon, god of fickle seas and fierce tempests swelled with rage. His vengeance found its target not in Minos but in his wife the virtuous Pasiphae. He kindled within the queen a monstrous infatuation for the majestic bull. Thus she found herself a victim of an insatiable desire, a cruel passion as relentless as the tide. Overwhelmed by this twisted longing, Pasiphae turned to the wise Daedalus, a master of craft and invention. His genius devised a lifelike cow of wood beneath whose hollow form Pasiphae could hide. It was a creation so lifelike that it tricked even the white bull. Trapped within the wooden simulacrum, the queen's heart pounded like a war drum as the white bull approached. A deed both terrible and tragic was done consummating a union that was as unnatural as it was inevitable. Nine agonizing months passed. The palace echoed with the queen's screams heralding the birth of a creature as unspeakable as the act that had conceived it. The minotaur with the body of a man and the head of a bull was born. A grotesque testament to Minos hubris and Pasiphae's manipulated passion the creature's wails filled the halls of the Cretan palace forever serving as a reminder of the deceit that had led to its birth. Despite the harrowing circumstances of its creation, the Minotaur was a creature of divine origin and could not be killed. It was allowed to live hidden away in the palace. Its monstrous visage and inhuman appetites a haunting embodiment of a king's arrogance and a queen's twisted love. The Minotaur, the monstrous offspring of Crete's royal lineage would forever be tied to the destiny of the island a living symbol of the dire consequences that come from challenging the will of the gods. With every passing moon the creature born of deceit and unnatural passion the Minotaur grew in size and strength. Its roar echoed through the palace its inhuman nature revealing itself in the most horrifying manner, a ravenous hunger for human flesh. The denizens of Crete lived in the shadow of fear their dreams haunted by the beast's bellowing cries and the king's guilt-ridden face. Despite the monstrous form and the chaos it wreaked Minos was unable to slay the Minotaur for it was a creature of divine creation. Desperate for a solution, the king made the arduous journey to the Oracle of Delphi a conduit to the gods and their mysterious designs. She spoke in enigmatic whispers instructing Minos to confine the beast within a labyrinth, a structure as twisted and complex as the circumstances that had given birth to the Minotaur. Daedalus the architect of the ill-fated wooden cow was once again summoned to the royal palace. With furrowed brow and weary heart he embarked on his new task creating a labyrinth so intricate and vast it would trap even the most cunning being. Deep within its convoluted bowels, the Minotaur was to be imprisoned forever removed from the world above. While the palace was consumed by the monstrous crisis, a different tragedy unfolded. Androgeus, the son of Minos and a youth of unmatched valor, was slain by the Athenians consumed by envy of his victories in their games. The news of his death reached Crete like a storm, its impact etching a deep crease of grief and rage onto Minos' already troubled brow. Driven by revenge, Minos commanded his troops plunging Crete and Athens into a bitter war. The clashing of bronze and the cries of war echoed across the sea eventually culminating in the sweet but heavy taste of victory for Crete. However, Minos was not a king to be satisfied with mere victory. He demanded a tribute that would forever remind Athens of their transgressions. 
Seven Athenian boys and seven girls at the peak of their youth were to be sent to Crete every nine years. Their fate was sealed the moment they set foot on the island, to be lost within the labyrinth a sacrifice to appease the monstrous Minotaur. The echoing roars from the labyrinth served as a chilling reminder of the debt Athens paid a toll for the life of one cherished prince extracted in the terror and blood of innocence. Amidst the despair-ridden streets of Athens a young prince arose unbroken in spirit and resolute in purpose. Theseus son of the Athenian king beheld the mourning families their cries for their sacrificed children echoing in the somber twilight. A flame sparked within him a determination forged in the crucible of his people's suffering. He declared his intention to volunteer as tribute to descend into the beast's den to face the Minotaur and if the gods willed it to end the reign of terror once and for all. His journey across the wine dark sea was fraught with a grim sense of purpose. When the shores of Crete materialized on the horizon his heart thudded not with fear but with a steadfast resolve. Upon setting foot on the Cretan soil his gaze was met by the piercing eyes of Ariadne Minos' daughter a princess as captivating as the island itself. In Theseus she found a defiant spark of hope that dared to challenge the dreadful status quo her family had established. In the hushed secrecy of a moonlit night Ariadne slipped Theseus a ball of thread the lifeline that would guide him through the dark labyrinth's heart and back. Her voice trembling yet determined instructed him to tie the thread at the entrance and let it unravel as he ventured into the belly of the beast. The thread ordinary in appearance would serve as a beacon of survival amidst the tortuous twists and turns of Daedalus's creation. The morning dawned the golden sunlight casting long eerie shadows across the stone-cold entrance of the labyrinth. Theseus stood before it the weight of his destiny pressing upon him. His hand clutched the ball of thread, his lifeline Ariadne's thread. The stone gate creaked open and Theseus stepped into the darkness. The labyrinth swallowed him its winding pathways twisting and turning like the coils of a monstrous serpent. Within the heart of the labyrinth the Minotaur awaited a grotesque manifestation of divine retribution and unnatural desires. The air was filled with a guttural growl, the stench of decay and the echoing cries of the damned. The epic clash echoed within the labyrinth's stony belly. The beast and the man the embodiment of deceit and the symbol of defiance fought with savage intensity. The battle ended with Theseus emerging as the victor the Minotaur's monstrous reign cut short by the Athenian prince's resolve. As the life ebbed away from the Minotaur so did the dark shadow that had hung over Crete and Athens. Theseus emerged from the labyrinth a survivor of its twisted design the vanquisher of the beast and the liberator of Athens. The joyous cries of his people heralded his victorious return the echoes of a dark era fading away with each cheer. But the hero's return was marked with a bittersweet farewell. Ariadne the Cretan princess who had risked everything for Theseus was left alone on the island of Naxos. Betrayed and abandoned Ariadne was found by the god Dionysus. Moved by her tale and her courage the god took her as his wife. As Theseus returned to Athens he brought with him not only victory but also a renewed hope. His tale of courage and determination lived on echoed in the bustling streets of Athens in the hushed whispers of the city folk and in the vibrant frescoes adorning the city's walls. The tale of the Minotaur and the Labyrinth became a reminder of the cost of deceit and the price of challenging the gods. But it also illuminated the power of hope and courage embodied by Theseus who dared to challenge the status quo and free his people from a monstrous reign of fear. Under Theseus' rule Athens thrived its people no longer living under the shadow of the Minotaur. The hero king's legacy lived on his tale becoming a beacon of hope of the triumph of courage over fear and of the human spirit's indomitable resolve.